if we're really going to be uh, world-class Christians, we really need to be global minded um, because that's just simply the heart of God. You know, so no matter what our capacity is as we serve, um, we just need to have that sort of lens. We can't get myopic. I think when we don't have a wider lens in terms of far as for all the things that God uh, is up to across the globe, uh, we really miss out. Hey guys, Frank with Tithely coming to you with another episode of Modern Church Leader. Today I am pumped to talk about global outreach uh, here with my new friend, Paul Hansen um, from a great church. Paul, I'd love for you to jump in and tell uh, all the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you're doing as global outreach pastor uh, at Grace Community Church. Frank, happy to do it. Really, really glad to be here with you. And listen, as we were talking offline just a bit ago, just kudos to you and your team. And just thank you so much just for putting this together. And I just think, you know, having these opportunities as we get to uh, spend the time together as believers is just such a huge thing. I think when we were talking about it, it's a, it's a gift, you know, because um, uh, what the scriptures talk about is that we might be mutually encouraged by one another's faith. And that is a spiritual gift to impart to one another. And so this medium is just one way of doing that. So to you again and your team, Frank, thank you so much. Yeah, I love so, that. And I love that perspective i might have to use that in like the show description uh, oh to totally take it just <laughs> just delete this episode and you just rip it off that's great but i mean that's that really i mean i just love that you picked up on it that really is kind of the the spirit and the heart of the show is just like there's a lot of church leaders all over the world and i don't think they all have access to hearing from other church leaders you know what i'm saying yeah. um yeah. and it, obviously the internet has changed that big time and there's a lot of content online um, but you know, we try to get in churches of all shapes and sizes, all, you know, types of churches from all over the place and bring church leaders out of those kind of contexts onto the show, you know, and, and, yeah. Yeah. and really like, you know, there's thousands and thousands of churches that are, you know, a hundred, 200 members. And so hearing from church leaders of those size churches and what they're going through and kind of how they're doing church and how things are changing. I think it's powerful, right? So I, I think just, yep. and, and then you're, you know, you're at a church that's a couple thousand. And so hearing from guys like you and what you're doing, and there's other churches like you. So it's like just bringing that kind of diversity of types of church leaders and types of churches. Um, I think there's just a lot to learn. So I love it. I love having these conversations. You know, and I, and I think, again, if anything else that's taught us from the time of COVID and all the difficulties we've all been through, it's been the great leveler in so many ways, you know. Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't think there's a leader out there that hasn't felt a lot of pain. I don't think there's a leader out there that hasn't been really discouraged. I don't think there's a leader out there of churches of any size that hasn't said, you know, maybe I should do X or something, right. anything else, you know. And so yeah. um, whatever we can do, I think, to, you know, pull the veil back to the, you know, I think the darkness that's really trying to just put that in where the thief's coming to kill, to steal, to destroy. And instead, uh, if we can return uh, our eyes and our focus where it needs to be onto Jesus, where we can get encouragement together, you know, um, and uh, I, I think that's that's it. Um, I think such a, a an important thing. And so, yeah, yeah. we can bring that joy, uh, I think, as far as a perspective for all of us. I think we're all better for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, man, let's talk outreach. That's that's what you. I mean, you've done a lot. Of, actually, let's let's yeah. start with you. Yeah. Like, how did you get into the industry? And yeah, you bet. What's your what's your journey yep. been like? Get to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So we had a chance to chat around this a little bit, but um, so the church I'm at presently, God's given me the grace to be here for about 20 years now. So, that's gosh, all, that's, that's a good run right I did there. Start when I was, you know, yeah. So I started when I was when I was nine, <laughs> and. Um, Dang it. Uh, yeah, no, again, that would be an absolute lie. So I've been here for 20 years. Uh, we've been here, my wife and I, Amy, um, have served uh, this particular church, Grace Community, in a couple different capacities over the years. I think I chatted about this a little bit with you, but we were their uh, ministry development pastor for a number of years, their executive pastor, and uh, presently I serve in the area of global outreach. And um, coming to the idea of global outreach, you know, I think, uh, well, firstly, um, if we're really going to be uh, world-class Christians, we really need to be global-minded um, because that's just simply the heart of God. You know, so no matter what our capacity is as we serve, 
Um, we just need to have that mm -hmm. sort of lens. We can't get myopic. And so many times it's just so easy just because in ministry there's so many things that just like, man, um, a lot of times there's things that can encourage us and take our perspective, but things that discourage us and take our perspective and just take us from out here into here, you know, and um, that's that's too bad because um, I think when we don't have a wider lens in terms of far as for all the things that God uh, is up to across the globe, uh, we really yeah. miss out. And, uh, you know, one of my very favorite verses just talks about the end game. The end game is, you know, scriptures make it pretty plain. Some from every tribe, some from every nation will be there. And so at the end of the day, um, we just simply need to have a heart that has a, uh, at least a, a focus to that that yeah. sort of perspective, you know, from uh, to the end of the earth. So uh, so in here, at global as a global outreach pastor, you know, uh, a couple of things that we've tried to do. Probably one thing that we've been working on over this past year is just as far as really sussing out what does it really mean when we talk about this idea of global outreach, you know, sounds really big, sounds yeah. really impressive, sounds that sort of thing. But really, it's just um, our biblical responsibility for every single believer that we'd have, again, that sort of focus. Um, we uh, kind of take it from the idea of far as for, you know, in the Great Commission, when Jesus challenged us, he said, uh, you know, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of mm -hmm. all the nations. Um, and uh, so the idea here is, as far as when he gave us our marching orders, told us that we're to be about winning the loss, for building them up, and you know, equipping the worker. And so, as we have that focus, what we like to talk about here at this particular church is uh, we like to branch out. And when we are branching out, uh, we try to break it down to three different ways. Um, one, we we'll want to talk about what does it really mean when we just simply can cross the street with the gospel. You know, and this is the opportunity that uh, I have to reach out to friends and neighbors who are in my walks of life, my circles. You know, I think a real challenge, you know, here's just kind of a sidebar for guys in ministry is that many times if we're not intentional ourselves, it's so easy just to simply have most of our friends, most of our folks that are close in be folks mm -hmm. who already know Jesus. And uh, when, when that happens, uh, that puts us in a place where we just... Uh, we, we, we miss out on a lot of great things, I think, that God wants to do in through our life personally and remind us just how good it right. is to know Jesus. You know, so um, anyways, but that sort of focus, what does it mean for me to be looking to cross the street? Uh, we also want to focus on what does it mean to cross cultures? Um, and we don't necessarily need to hop on a plane to do that. Uh, many times we need to, and, 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 and that, that's good. But to cross a culture is just simply to reach out for someone who's not like me. You know, so who, someone who's not like me and maybe a socioeconomic status or someone who's not like me in terms of uh, melanin right. or that sort of thing. You know, we're just different. Um, and so we try to drill into that a bit. And the third way what we talk about is just really um, uh, crossing barriers to the gospel. Uh, what do we need to do to really help people who have not yet placed their faith and trust in Jesus because they don't know about Jesus. They haven't heard him. Uh, they don't haven't heard the name. And so we're, we're trying to drill into that. Uh, and, and so with all of those things, this is stuff that we're just trying to, you know, um, move towards. These aren't things that we're an expert in by any stretch yeah, of the imagination. Yeah. How do you, yeah. you know, like, I think churches, church leaders, right, have kind of, that's the, that's the big vision, the big kind of way to describe the vision. How do you take that to, you know, to the, the church, the, the membership, the people, and kind of uh, inspire them? to go do something, you know, like what, what does that look like? Just practically, you know, in the church, in your communication, in your programs or whatever you you guys are doing, like, how does that kind of go into real practical application? Yeah. I think practical application, maybe it gets back to that idea before we even uh, do a program, which we can, you know, a lot of different things we can do and line up. And I think we need to be intentional with that. We're always trying to do something like that. But I think before uh, we need to be doing things, we really need to make sure that we're, we're being intentional ourselves. This idea is definitely something I think recently the Lord's been putting on my heart. What does it really mean to be with God uh, before I, I do for God? Um, and, uh, you know, and so in, in that respect, part of my being is trying to line up just the intentional path of my life that on a consistent basis, I'm getting time with folks who don't know Jesus personally, you know, I'll, I'll be before I'm, you know, talking to the rest of the church about what they can do. What am I doing? Yeah. You know, in that respect. And, uh, you know, that's not a burdensome thing. That's just a thing that, again, it's just, man, 
Um, what the scripture says, pray that you be active in sharing your faith, that you might have a good understanding of all the things we have in Jesus. You know, and um, if we don't own that up close and personal ourselves, I think, uh, you know, our, our doing is always going to be just maybe on a programmatic right. level, if yeah. nothing less, you know. And so, um, <clears throat> so anyways, so yeah, just try to do that. For, for me, um, when we, I, I do that is uh, at least our a local gym that we've been a part of. Actually, my wife and I do that together. So um, we're taking a little bit of a hiatus on, on some things right now. I'm, I'm actually in the middle of uh, training for a half marathon with my oldest daughter. So old dad trying to keep up with young nice. young woman doing his best he can i get it I, hey i'm i'm i have triplet nine-year-old okay. boys so i still got time yeah but i'm i'm right there with you i gotta <laughs> i gotta be able to you know keep up at least through well, high school that's I good i remember when i was running with my girl in high school too my oldest girl and i remember i don't know we were running a 5k together and i thought we were doing pretty good and i just thought you know this is great you know keeping pace with her of course this is the first third of the race and of course you know at this point i'm i'm 100 percent spent and then finally she just sort of just kind of sighs and says well dad i'll see you later you know and then just like <laughs> <laughs> she's just gone i'm like she's like are you warmed <laughs> up yet dad we're gonna start running like we're gonna like, run I'm in the middle now. of a hard race right. and it's like what do you mean <laughs> that's awesome yeah oh well <laughs> No, that that's awesome. So you're you're anyways you're going into yeah, 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 the gym yeah. and kind of your personal personal yep. outreach and uh, you know personal kind of uh, just efforts, right? And and it, you know, like I mean, I love that. I guess you know, I I think every church leader, right, being the example to the people around you is kind of critical, right? Like, and and people will be inspired by your life. Like, great leaders don't always have to say a lot of things or put a lot of programs in place or whatever people are inspired by being around them and in the life they live and they want to kind of imitate that just by seeing it you know so i think kind of what you're saying is really important if you can infect a bunch of people around you to want to go reach out to people at the gym or at their like that all just keeps uh growing because it's becomes people's yeah, life you know and, and I, I think that just helps us you know when um you know we just start trying to think through the narratives of what jesus said what it's like um in terms of reaching the loss, he says, listen, uh, the fields, they're white unto harvest. Uh, and he, he, right before that, he says these just compelling words, open your eyes, you know, and, and, and I think, um, you know, sometimes just what that requires is, again, way before I'm thinking about the doing, way before I'm thinking about this program or that program or this effort or that effort, man, I just need to be immersed with the opportunity that, boy, Jesus wants to use me today to simply, you know, um, be a light in otherwise a dark place, you know, mm -hmm. and in those moments, man, I tell you what, what's, just, it doesn't need to be complicated. It's just some of those moments that I think have been, you know, particularly highlight for me looking back over the past several years is, um, yeah, there's definitely been big moments. We've seen folks come to Jesus who otherwise wouldn't, but sometimes it's just been, you know what, Hey, um, they've got a chance there's a little bit level of a bit more, uh, I'll even say authenticity, perhaps in people's lives when they're just sweating together and working really hard and just, you know, trying to get oxygen. And so you get a chance to share some things that come up more quickly and you just be able to say, hey, can I just pray for you on that right now? I remember this one guy when I offered that, we were just in, coming off the mat of um, one particular gym. Uh, it was actually, it was a kickboxing uh, gym is what it was. And, uh, you know, so I just offered that. I said, you mind if I just pray for you really quick on uh, some of these things we talked about? He's like, you mean like here? I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, you can do that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. So, so I was like, okay, yeah, let's yeah. do it. So, you know, just prayed for him on, on the things that he had brought up. And he was like, man, that was, that's amazing. I can't believe that. That's, thank you so much. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, most people, and I feel like I've heard this story accounted for a number of other folks that have done this too, as far as won't refuse getting the opportunity if you just want to pray for them, you know. Right. And uh, what a, what a great way to begin to open the door to a number of other spiritual conversations in the future. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it definitely sets a tone. Um, and and op opens up the door right yep. for, for unless they just run for the hills but you know you'll see him at the gym again <laughs> that's right and, uh, <laughs> that's right. and so there's the, there's that there's that weird guy you know, yeah it's all right um so how like 
I guess, you know, again, getting in a little bit of the practical stuff, like I'm trying to tease out stuff that other folks thinking about, you know, reaching their community and they're maybe they're in a seat at their church as a church leader, thinking about how to equip the church. Right. Um, and I love the personal responsibility, the personal, um, like the leader being the example. And obviously that, you know, I think that applies to every great leader. Um, but what, what have you seen change or kind of morph over the last 18 months, 24 months with COVID and your church reaching the community? Like what's, I don't know, what's it been like? And, and yeah. what do you, what coming out of it, maybe not out of it, but coming to this point where things are significantly different than 18, 20 months ago, um, you know, what's changed and what are you guys doing? Yeah, I'd say a lot of things have changed, you know, actually, um, as it comes even to this particular position, I'm somewhat, this is, this was, this happened throughout the course of the pandemic. Um, we were actually in the midst of a number of things that just required us some, a lot of things from the pandemic. Some other things were at work too, but, uh, we we're going through a time of just reorganization as a church and, so we were all finding our feet, and I think that's probably, I, I don't know, I'm, I, this is where I definitely would say this is sort of situation that we're in is just to, we're, uh, we're another beggar where we found some bread, we'll share what we've got, but man, we need a lot ourselves, you know, um, yeah, you yeah. Know, what, uh, you know, in terms of a number wise, uh, sharing this with you earlier, you know, we basically were about half the size of the church that we were prior to the pandemic. A yeah. lot of that is, you know kind of set up for, um, showing, you know, I think some, maybe some innate weaknesses that we as a church, and I would say probably others had with them too. I don't know if really the pandemic caused as much as it revealed. Um, and so I think presently at this point, you know, I think one of the most important things, even before, although there's a number of ways that we're still trying to just even just help our folks, what does it mean to reach out specifically to, you know, school teachers right now? It's one thing that we're starting to head into. We've just been having, you know, obviously a very, very trying time. You know, what, mm -hmm. how can we bless community leaders and civil servants who've been just raked over the coals? So right, we're right. trying to just kind of hone in on that. We've had a number of actually even some places, not only have we encouraged folks to do that, we've also had some coordinated events to help, you know, just bring that focus specifically to, I think, those that have been really been hit hardest. You know, I think that's yeah. something that would really bless the heart of God when we have that sort of focal point, you know, as far as uh, this is definitely, I think, a context of the least of these in that respect. And so, boy, then we've done it unto him. So let's let's go for it. So, so we've done all that. But I'd say what we've been learning is, is that, man, um, gosh, the prayer that Jesus started for the church millennia ago is something we still need to make sure that we are praying ourselves, that we would pray that we would be one, uh, as you, Jesus, and the Father are one. Um, you know, what is too bad, uh, quite frankly, was that to see, um, you know, where we were as a church is like, man, just on... Uh, go ahead, pick any issue. Let's pick on masks, shall we? Well, let's do it. You know, it's just like, yeah. man, here you got this 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 thing that uh, for some reason had the power of being so divisive that yeah, it was really. stronger than at least what we profess the blood of Jesus to be. I don't know about you, but I find that enormously convicting, regardless of what side you are in those particular issues. Just the fact that that lack of unity was there. Um, and again, I think we can say in the end, we can say, God, thank you for your mercy and simply revealing what we needed to see. Um, because, you know, when God says, I test the heart, it's not because God says, man, I, I wonder what's in their heart. It's like, no, he, he, he knows what's in our wicked little heart. We, we need to see what's in mm -hmm. our hearts. And so um, getting a chance to see some of those things gives us the opportunity. Why would he do that? It gives us the opportunity then so that we can repent of those things and, uh, you know, continue to reach then towards him and trust him in the process. And so I'd say it's been, you know, of all things, we've, we've, cut, we've continued to do the things that we know are right in terms of far as for, as I mentioned, you know, some of those other practical things, reaching out to the community, reaching out to those. But in the process, boy, May we just our prayer be that we would be one as Jesus and the Father are one. And where we've seen where we have been the cause of disunity, may we be the one quickest to humble ourselves before the Lord. Um, and so that he can lift us up in due time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, how you guys, um, in terms of 
unity and navigating, you know, the mask issue or uh, social justice or race or in just any of the stuff that has bubbled up politics, obviously. Um, I mean, I think all of that stuff plays a role in community outreach, right? Like again, tying it back to kind of what you do and what you're focused on, like figuring that stuff out. Um, and it's really hard. I would put church leaders in the bucket of uh, kind of, you know, teachers and police force and uh, hospital workers and right. The frontline people that have in different ways been, you know, on the front lines for all of this stuff over the last year to two years. Um, I, I mean, I've just heard from a lot of pastors that it's been really hard, like, because they're stuck in this spot where they want to help people fix their eyes on Jesus and be disciples and live like Jesus would through all of this. But it, man, it's really hard and people get caught up in all these different things. And it's just hard. Like, and pastors are like stuck going, what do I do? How do I lead through this? How do I help people stay focused on Jesus? Like, so anyways, that's just a lot of, uh, you know, words to say, how have you guys kind of reached the community and been the light through all of this? Like, is there any, well, let me, let any me, things you feel like you've done well? Well, let me, let me, let me pause before we get into the formal things back to the church. I just want to just kind of just grab a hold of that real quick, what you brought up. And I really appreciate uh, you just bringing that to the forefront. You know, um, if you or anyone else has been paying attention to a lot of the headlines as they go past, you know, you've seen a wake of destruction in the wider evangelical church over these past number of months. Some of it you could say they brought upon themselves. Some of it might have been started before the pandemic, but the net yield is all the same. There is a right. there's a, 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 a wide swath of devastation that has gone in within the leadership of the local church and the evangelical church specifically. And so part of um, uh, my heart, my wife's heart on um, terms of uh, we, we, we have a heart to see that those things would continue to be addressed, not just from the pandemic, but would continue to be addressed effectively. You know, uh, one thing that I would say as a, as a whole, the evangelical church we've done poorly on is really seeing that our pastors and our leaders are in a position of health and strength and ministering from a place of where they can be restored um, as necessary. Um, and I don't mean just from quote unquote, the big sins. I'm meaning just as far as the practicality of day to day life, you know, that um, boy, uh, our pastors and our leaders, I think, are often put in positions and places where no one is caring for the shepherd. And um, there is there is not enough really been, been put forward to see that they can be leading from a place of strength. You know, all the right. time I hear people want, oh, yeah, we want a stronger church. We want stronger influence for the gospel. And in the end, they'd say, you know what, you want a stronger church? Well, then you need a stronger leader. And if you want a stronger leader, then you need to see that they're positioned to lead and to love out of a powerful, restorative, life-giving influence and the only way that that's possible is if there is at least some greater intentionality um which is at least what has been really on my heart more recently my wife's heart we we both actually come from not only have we been in full-time ministry ourselves now for 27 years we both come from full-time ministry homes so uh yeah, I grew yeah. up second as a gen or second, second generation. generation. Yeah. Or, or. So, yeah, I grew up as a PK. She grew up as an MK. Together we were TO, theological offspring. And then now we've had our kids. So I guess, you know, that, that goes even further. And it's just like, man, so I, I think we at least are at least mildly familiar with the challenges that come from that. A tremendous place of privilege and something I would right. never, ever, ever change. Uh, regardless, but um, it also comes with a very unique set of pressures and difficulties that we as a wider church, I think, need to say, yes, I'm willing to do something about that. Um, and so, you know, some things that my wife and I have been dreaming and working at towards as far as what do we do to really see that we can effectively uh, network pastors together in a place that they are safe in which to share. Uh, what can yeah. we do to see that some of the coaching issues that maybe perhaps need to be identified or dealt with, it, both either in the home or in the church? And what can we do to simply provide space for, you know, sometimes it's interesting. I've talked with uh, this one uh, gal. She's a young single gal, actually now, um, uh, excuse me, she just got married and now even has a little kid of her own. But she was speaking of the years growing up when her dad was a pastor who is no longer a pastor. And uh, when I talked to her, I said, you know, um, 
tell me about as far as for you know your 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 dad and some of those transitions there, especially at the end, were kind of difficult. What what was that like for you? And she said, you know, my dad was just a a great leader, and I think he could have made it if someone just would have given him a break. But no one would give him a break, you know. And it's just like, man, it's like, oh, that is so so. Uh, uh, I think uh, such a deep convicting thing for the wider church that we have somehow created an atmosphere where um, that wasn't okay for uh, at least that pastor to take a break. So, um, so anyways, yeah, I didn't want to get the well, too COVID, much there, but that's pretty COVID huge. And everything else around this time hasn't helped that. It's made it, <laughs> uh, it's made it a harder, I think. And, yep. uh, you know, for, and, and it's, you know, not trying to kind of lament the difficulties of being a pastor for everybody. Like it, it, people do it because it's their passion, it's their heart, they yep. feel called. And uh, that's why they do it. It's not because it's easy. It's yeah. not because, you know, it pays the best. It's not be, right because of <laughs> not? glory or anything like that. Um, and, and as with being a police officer or a doctor yeah. or a nurse or yeah. a teacher, like all these things are people don't do them for the glory and the money and those kind of things. They do them because they, they love whatever that profession is, yeah. but it's hard when you're stuck, you know, as a, as a church leader of any level and you're kind of stuck in the middle on a lot of these like topics, decisions, uh, you know, just debates, right. About kind of, is, is it right to wear the mask or not wear the mask? And then you got people in your church that fall on either side and now you're stuck, um, in a pretty, pretty difficult place. So, um, anyways, that's, there's, there's a lot there. Uh, and I've done some, not, not a ton of episodes on it, but I, I did one recently, I interviewed a pastor and, uh, we talked all about kind of mental health and his, his groups and, you know, counseling and pastors yeah. groups and things that have helped him, uh, really, you know, make it through times like this. And I just, you know, you need, you need those networks. You need those people that are in your corner, uh, just believing in you and and kind of fighting in the trenches with you regardless of kind of what the drama is but they're with you you know yeah. um i think that's important yeah so let, let's let's just jump back into the outreach thing what about online how is you know lots of changed i'm sure online going online has been a big thing for you guys over the last couple of years um i don't know what 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 around outreach and reaching your community and reaching the world globally have yeah. you guys seen in terms of doing church online well well for sure you know i i would be totally remiss not to say that there was some really great wins through covid which i think um you know through the pandemic and everything really helped us to maybe stretch our lens a little bit in terms of what we thought was possible for many churches of course right. you've seen that where things that they weren't even doing at all online and suddenly obviously all was online so those are yeah. things i think that we can truly be thankful for um you know i guess i'm, I'm having out the opportunity there's a number of dear uh, friends and ministry partners all around the continent of Africa that uh, I've had the chance to over the past number of years, um, sometimes be with in person. I've always enjoyed that. Uh, but now, you know, at least there's at least more opportunity to stay, at least maybe perhaps a more consistent contact. Um, if it be, you know, again, through doing short Zoom conferences with a number of leaders, or if it be simply staying much more uh, in contact and intentional via WhatsApp with, um, you know, ministry opportunities, challenges, and prayers, and being a part. So those things, I think, we can really say, again, plus, 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 you know, none of the stuff of the pandemic, obviously, sidelined Lord's ideas on stuff. This is stuff that just, you know, again, I ha think has helped a great deal, right. you know, uh, press us into new ways of thinking about stuff. Um, I, I think on the other side, though, that as far as when it is, you know, again, um, possible to be together, you know, I think if anything, what the pandemic has also taught is that, um, shoot, it's a, it's a, it's where it's a, it's a great opportunity to expand new spheres we might have missed. It also shows us how much we need one another, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, I, I think of what how Paul wrote in the Philippians that my being with you, your joy will be um, made full, you know. And so the idea here of that being again, in far as for what we can have anything, hopefully it is just turned up the notch in terms of the levels of importance 
you know, when right. Hebrews admonishes us, you know, hey, you know, when it's possible for us, you know, don't be in the habit of some who are in that, you know, who, who, who forget to gather together, but encourage right. one another, you know, all the more as you see the day approaching. And I think uh, if anything, maybe perhaps it's just, you know, uh, it's turned up the meter of the importance of getting that time together and being a bit more intentional in that respect. So, yeah. um, you know, so the win, I think creative opportunities using, uh, uh, particularly as far as um, the mediums when really just gathering is not possible either on a health perspective or a, on, a, on a travel perspective, you know, there's still ways to be a bit more intentional than maybe we were prior to that. And I think those are just good things. And as much as we can keep dialing on that, great. And hopefully if it can be galvanizing towards our convictions when we can gather, shoot, we better be making the use most of those these opportunities in that respect, you know? So, right, right. Yeah. How are you guys getting people back in the building? So, term, right, yep. like your, your point about gathering, right? It's massively important. And I think the, the, the whole world has, has, the light has been put on yep. the fact that people need to get together with people, yep. right? Like it's so important, like we were created in this way to, to be social, to have relationships, to connect with others. And you can do it on Zoom and you can do it on video, but it's not the same. And so yep. I think everybody knows and, and craves that real, you know, getting together and being with my family, being with my friends, being with my small group, being at church. But at the same time, churches are having a hard time getting people back in the building for lots of reasons, all related to everything that's going on. So, you know, what, what are you guys up to? What's how's it going what do you what do you feel like is connecting with people yeah to get you know back in that kind of community yeah, yeah, that's such a great question you know remember at the beginning the start of our time here together we talked about that um you know uh one thing that it uh was uh helpful even if it was unfortunate through the pandemic was it was very revealing to see like okay the level of unity we thought was there actually was not there it looks like oh there were things that we thought were everyone held to as primary importance they said no these things are more important so so then it gives us the opportunity to correct you know and um one thing that then just even then through this interim period what we noticed is that like uh we get some folks that perhaps they've um you know they've 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 tasted of of the gospel they've tasted of the lord they've seen that he's good but it's just like man so you mean all i need to do is just kind of stroll over to this couch and turn it on isn't that cool is that that, yeah. Is that it? And it's like, uh, you know, last I checked, is like, I, I don't think that's actually going to make the disciple that makes the disciple that we say we're about. You know, it's just, it's just not gonna, not gonna do it. So right. part of our solution, not that we're, you know, in a sense trying to be heavy-handed, but we're like, okay, um, we're enabling the problem if we just say this is the, this is the plan. You know, so there's a delightful little switch on your live streams. I'm not sure if you've found it or not, but it's actually called off. <laughs> <laughs> and so for our um, streaming of like for instance our services we've actually gone to making the decision we are turning we've turned it off um, it's not that we don't record anymore it's not that we don't make it available online in the future but if you want to participate in the present um, we are actually encouraging you to come on and join us uh, because we believe okay. there's value in that happening and so right. um, if it's just absolutely impossible hey great we're going to have post it up online for you catch it later um, but it's really it's not a substitute just to kind of hang out indefinitely with no further plan um, we want you to you know again some folks will feel differently we want you to don't go past your comfort level feel safe if, if that's what it is but we're, we're also then what we're trying to do is be strategic enough to at least love you enough maybe that's what we're saying to love you enough to say for your best we really believe you need to be with other believers um, right. It may not be possible for you, and that's that's okay. But if it is possible, we're going to make it a list a little bit more desirable, and so we've clicked that off. And um, done. And what's the when did you do that? Oh, I think let's see, we're probably about four months in now to that. Maybe okay. so it's been a little while. So and um, when you did it, what was the response? I think and honestly, what people are responsive to us is they just need to have. I think it gives the chance. You're not going to please everybody, you know. Yeah. I think we're all found that hopefully now. So it's just like you think you just got to say this is as far as we prayed about it and determined this is the best that we believe we need to do at this time. And we were trying to consistent about it, too. So we had other, for instance, uh, smaller gatherings um, where, you know, they were kind of doing the same thing that um, we just asked them to follow suit. That's just like, OK, so if you're meeting, we're 
uh, you can make something available for the future, but uh, in terms of far for a live stream, we're just we're not doing live streams. We're either we're in person or we're not. Um, and if you want to record it, great. But um, for as far as for live streams, we're just holding off on that right now. Yeah. And um, did and you see when you did it? Did you see over the course of weeks or months, like uh, attendance kind of creep up a bit? More people coming in person. Yep. Yep. You know, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, again, maybe if I can go back all the way to the, you know, thing way, way, way in the start of the pandemic when some of our personal pain, when we were trying to navigate net mask, no mask, how we do all that, you know, it was interesting. One thing that was, uh, had a chance to observe was, uh, you know, place that I go for, um, uh, present one the, the gym that my wife and I attend, uh, they were just, they were actually much more of a, of a liberal, uh, approach because in our state they could do it that way um and so uh, but they just made the decision and went on and one thing that was a little bit sad to me was that there was a whole lot less drama at that gym than there was at my church <laughs> it were wow. you know people just sort of like well, they were good with it because it just was like right. it was clear it was decided they weren't trying to please everybody they said this is what it is if it doesn't work for you that's fine you know maybe there's someone right. else that will work you know, um, and it's just, and, and so I, I think again, um, if you can be clear, if we're going to be really godly in our communication, it's not going to be because you please everybody. It's going to be because you're clear. I think godly communication in the end is clear communication. And those are things that I've personally had to repent it over. Cause I think, you know, oftentimes, many times in the past, just try to do what you can to kind of make it good for all, you know, Hey, don't want to do that. And I think in the end, you like got to make it clear, have some good, um, uh, uh, godly counsel with you. You got to have some good, um, you know, a, a plethora of counselors around you, but then you, I think to make the most godly decision, you just got to be clear and just say, this is what it is. And then you just, you know, uh, biting, uh, except for something else really else happening that you just didn't plan on at all. Just stick to it, you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. Stick to it and roll. Well, man, this has been awesome. I, I, I don't want to take up a ton more time. Let me ask you two quick closing questions. Yeah. 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 No, this has been great. Um, Give us a, a book that you would recommend to other church leaders. Um, it, it could be on any topic, but something that's inspired you that you're like, oh, you got to read this one. Oh, very good. Okay. Well, um, I would say <laughs> this is one that I just personally love. Uh, it's called Get Your Life Back. Um, Get Your Life Back. And it is by John Eldridge. No, okay. I don't Love necessarily it. endorse a hundred percent of everything, but I'd say, man, if you want to be challenged personally as a church leader, uh, specifically, I'd say this is a book for our time. Huge. All right. Absolutely huge. Get, Just probably finished that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Yeah. L- last question. Um, what's a podcast that you're currently listening to? Podcasts, you know what? Um, tell you what, I I kind of jump around to a number of different ones, but I'd say uh, a, a great podcast that is just fun to jump into. Particularly if you want to start wrestling around with this idea of effective global outreach, um, yeah. it comes from an organization called Sixteen Fifteen by Matt Ellison, um, and okay. um, I think it has a cleverer name. But if you Google that Sixteen Fifteen uh, podcast, like spelled out or the numbers, uh, the numbers one six one five. It comes from Mark Sixteen Fifteen that we would be ultimately um, reaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. So love that Sixteen Fifteen. Matt Ellison, just an extra free one as far as a book that he recently put out. Um, uh, that that particular uh, fellow, Matt Ellison, the author of the same, would be a book called "When Everything Is Mission." Uh, go ahead, check that out. Again, just kind of would tickle your your thoughts as it pertains to global outreach opportunities. So uh, I love that, love that. Well, man, it's been good to have you on and uh, to talk about all the things going on over there and your role and yeah. just the work you guys are doing. So I uh, I hope this episode encourages a ton of other church leaders out there. Awesome. Frank, thank you so much. It's been great just to spend the time together. Really appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and thanks everybody for watching or for listening. Uh, we'll catch you next week with another episode of Modern Church Leader. See ya. See you later, guys.